the Queen's New York, is the home where What Happens in Atlantic City premieres. Reacher visits Tony Swan, a fellow comrade, along with two other members of his unit, Francis Neagley and David O'Donnell. Rather than him, they discover the body of his dog and indications that Swan has not been home for a very long time. Reacher makes the costly assumption that Swan is as dead as his dog, which would have cost him when he went to confront the person he believed to be involved. To dispel any doubt that Reacher isn't a program about a superhero, he gives a car that has been pursuing them such a severe kick to the front bumper that the airbag goes off. Rather than taking down an accomplice in the scheme to undermine the special investigators, he fractured New York police detective Gaetano Russo's nose. Both O'Donnell and Neagley refer to Reacher's own training as evidence that this was a mistake, emphasizing the risk of making assumptions. Reacher and Dixon have been in a love relationship for a long time. In the service, they never followed through on it, but now that Reacher is no longer Dixon's co, they do. This demonstrates even again how Reacher differs from other action thriller stories of a similar genre. Dixon poses a direct question about why they never got together, choosing to avoid skirting around their emotions or putting things in a subtextual manner. Even though Dixon and Reacher have been developing for a while for the characters, people might not anticipate how quickly it does. More than when the victim was his brother, Reacher is already deeply affected by this case. Reacher's romance in season two will further distract him rather than bring him solace. Put another way, the scene where Reacher has a drink with Neagley, O'Donnell, and Dixon in a hotel suite is where his unease is most evident. They talk about their lives after getting out of the military, with Reacher obviously being the most ignorant. For his allies in Atlantic City, as well as Margrave, Reacher's vagabond lifestyle seems strange. But these folks know Reacher and he knows them, unlike Roscoe and Oscar Finlay. Reacher looks back on his decisions as they discuss their lives, families, and well-paying careers. Reacher discovers the 110th viewer's photo from the previous episode's flashback when the team first gets to Atlantic City and Orozco's office. A duplicate of it was discovered at Orozco's office, Swan's residence, and Francis' workplace. Meagly, O'Donnell and Dixon acknowledge that they too have a copy of it conspicuously posted in some place. But Reacher's not even in possession of a copy of it. When you don't have walls, it's difficult to hang a picture on your wall, Meagly remarks to him, sounding a little disappointed. Reacher is troubled not only by his friends' deaths, but also by the seeming abundance of other people's lives. Reacher is not a man who doubts himself very often. The majority of what happened in Atlantic City is a diversion from the main subject, despite the investigation's success. A picture that's still hidden from Reacher and the team. They are searching for any ties to gambling or any other activity related to the type of security and investigative job that the deceased members of the 110th were paid to perform. The spectator is only made aware that the heroes are still unaware of what is happening by their constant asides with the season's antagonists. It is intended for viewers to feel uncomfortable, or perhaps a little bewildered, after watching this episode. Reacher is virtually unstoppable once he realizes what's happening. He and the rest of his team are as vulnerable as ever because neither he nor his pals know what's at risk yet. 